technology to identify any cow, and she won't ever lose an ear tag. Crew, let's ranch it up. Good day, everyone, and thanks for riding with us on this all-new episode of the Ranch It Up Radio Show. I'm Jeff Tigger Earhart. And I'm Rebecca Warner, a.k.a. Beck. A big thank you goes out to our partners, RanchChannel.com, Stockman's Livestock Exchange, the American Gelby Association, Imogene Ingredients, and Pharmatan, Westway Feed Products, Madura Boot and Western Wear, Allied Genetic Resources, and Allied Feeding Partners, Livestock Market, Equine Market, and AuctionTime.com, RFD TV, Wrangler, and this fine radio station. The markets, how high will they go? Justin Tupper, we're bringing you back one more time. The general manager of St. Ange Livestock in St. Ange, South Dakota. What do you have to say about that? That's a great question, and we've sure seen these feeder cattle uh, uh, shoot up. Uh, the board has uh, followed and come some, but uh, uh, the feeder cattle price is sure outpacing the board. Uh, uh, these light uh, grass weight cattle up in our area, uh, really in high demand. A lot of those guys uh, thought they looked a little high in the fall that normally buy them then, have uh, kind of weighted back, and now the uh, selection gets a little tighter and uh, the prices get a little higher. So why is that? What what? And that's kind of the big question: is why are we having such higher prices? I know that we have the lowest, uh, you know, cattle inventory that we've had, but there's there's some other factors that come into play of why we're seeing such incredible prices right now. Yeah, I, I think uh, I one of the believers that the cow numbers are maybe even shorter than uh, uh, what they think they are. But uh, uh, demand has been good. You know, we, we are importing quite a little more uh, uh, beef than we'd like to see, probably. But uh, uh, demand has stayed pretty good through here. And uh, the freezers are uh, somewhat empty in comparison to other years. Uh, so that all bodes well for the market. So do you think that just demand in general for beef from a consumer standpoint, do you think that that has gone up per se or that it has just been very, very steady, which has always been high that we know, and we are just having trouble trying to physically have the product to get into a consumer's hand? I think so. I think, uh, you know, when you look at uh, historic prices and and beef in general, uh, we're very used to a cheap food policy in this country. And uh, COVID kind of uh, changed that a little bit. And and, uh, we've upped the ante. And I think uh, they they like the quality and the kind and the very safest, best protein in the world. And we've done well. I I wouldn't say that our demand has went up, same as uh, reiterating what you said. But I think uh, we've held our own. And I think that's been good as this the cost have been higher for the consumer. Austin Henderson with Stockman's Livestock Exchange in Dickinson, North Dakota. We haven't heard from you in a while. What do you have for an update? Market report for Thursday, February 1st, uh, right at 4,250 head. Uh, and uh, we had a nice feeder cattle special along with the Greater Midwest Livestock Auctioneer Championship. I uh, did have about 400 uh, uh, way up cows and bulls. Uh, that seen that market very, very strong today. Uh, the middle cut of the cows were anywhere from 90 to 95, uh, with the top end of the cows bringing from $1.09 up to $1.15. In the bulls, uh, we've seen the middle cut of the bulls bring 110 to 115, with the high-yielding bulls from 129 all the way up to 134. Uh, in the feeder cattle, uh, we'll go through the steers here. Uh, I've seen that market very, very strong. 377-pound uh, steers bring 372.50. Uh, here's 488s at 338. Uh, here's 550-pound steers, 321.50. Uh, did have some uh, 604 pounders bring 306. Uh, we had some 650s bring 285. We had some 707s bring 273. Uh, we did have uh, several load lots. Here's two loads of shark crosses. Uh, weighed 742 at 265. Had some 788s at 253. Had some 866s at 240. Uh, into the heifers had uh, 308 pounders 242. 494s 281. Had some uh, 587s at 275. Some 707s at 249. <clears throat> so that's kind of how we got along. Uh, we did have 24 contestants. I tell you what, uh, it was a really really tough competition. A um, lot, of, lot of really good talent, uh, but we do want to congratulate our champion, and that is uh, Jace Thompson from Billings, Montana. And want to hear some of the top auctioneers around, just go to their Facebook page and watch some of those videos. Head to Stockman's Livestock Exchange, Dickinson, North Dakota. Check it out online at Facebook. Cow Country News, you know, the cow stuff. Here is an eye roller for y'all. PETA wants people to stop riding 
fiberglass merry-go-round horses. PETA is calling out a Kansas company called Chance Rides for putting animal designs on carousels. The animal rights group sent a letter to the company asking them to remove the animals from the carousels and replace them with vehicles or whimsical designs. PETA argues that having animal-themed carousels promotes the exploitation of animals and can lead to real-life animal abuse. So I'm assuming this company never got back to them that they kind of laughed about this and said, this is a little bit on the epic ridiculous side? That'd be my guess, and as you could tell, I was trying to hide a chuckle. I understand what you're doing. Remember those uh, little fiberglass horses outside of Kmart? Of course I do. They almost bucked you off, Beck. Ha ha, we've got a comedian in the room. I don't think she liked that one. Coming up, a new form of livestock identification, and the cows do not rip the tags out of their ears. Keep it tuned right here. The Ranch It Up Radio Show will be back after this. We've been telling you all about Pharmatan, or tannin, as some people will call it, from Imogene Ingredients, and how it battles scours. Well, listen to this customer. He's never going to go without it again. We lost more cattle than I would hate to let anybody know that we lost, but I had looked at a lot of different things, and some of the results that you told me about with the Pharmatan, I, I want to try it, which we did. We started out with the mineral. Last year, we did not treat any calves for scours. I am going to continue to feed tannin to save my livelihood, to save my animals. I am not willing to go through another calving season without the tannin. That's an insurance policy that I'm not going to be without. The quick, fast, easy, all-in-one location to look at bull sales. Head to ranchchannel.com. Check it out on your phone, ranchchannel.com. All the information on one page at your fingertips, videos, catalogs, everything, ranchchannel.com. This is Kim with Medora Boot and Western Wear, and we have a lot of fun stuff that's coming up and that we've gotten in already. We've gotten in our supply of American straw hats. We didn't have them last year, but we have them in now in all kinds of sizes and styles. And we also got in Atwood felts. So we have 20X and 5X, and they're at a very good price and look great. They're a good hat. So come by and see us at Medora Boot and Western Wear. Check them out online at MedoraBoot.com. The Tri-State Livestock News, what ranchers read. Stop by your local sale barn or livestock center and grab the latest issue of the Tri-State Livestock News. From the latest cattle market reports to various news stories within the ag industry, the Tri-State Livestock News covers it all. You can also check us out at TSLN.com. And for those of you that might be interested in subscriptions or advertising, please give me a call, Tracy Hawk, at 406-951-3211. The Tri-State Livestock News, what ranchers read. Cattle Battle. Welcome back. It's the Ranch It Up Radio Show. The most information packed into a 30-minute program that we can find. It's your all things ranching newscast and so glad to be with y'all. Questions, comments, concerns, criticisms, rants, it doesn't matter. You can call or text us 707-726-2420. That's 707-RANCH20. Email ranchitupshow at gmail.com. Prowling around social media at Ranch It Up Show. Just recently, y'all know Beck and I were in Orlando, Florida for the NCBA Convention and Trade Show, and we love going every year. It's a chance for us to catch up with our partners and our sponsors, to see old friends, make new ones, but especially finding out what are the newest trends in cattle management, handling, and technology. And we love to bring you those stories of what we thought was maybe light years down the road in science is actually a reality today. With all of those discussions around electronic identification, we saw many third-party verification companies demonstrating their latest advances in tags and tagging and identification reading systems. Now, this makes sense because many of the programs offered for selling feeder cattle or what we call program cattle have to have some sort of permanent identification, which is a requirement to be in several programs. And we're going to be highlighting a lot of them in future uh, shows coming up. What I find so interesting is each cow, steer, bull, heifer, it doesn't matter, is unique in its physical identification, meaning its face is one of a kind, just like a fingerprint for you and me. What if we could 
identify each animal just by their face. Now, I'm not talking about how pretty much all of us at one time or another were able to identify every cow in our herds just by looking across the pasture, and we remember all of her information. In fact, I still remember cows of from when I was a kid. I'm talking about being able to access a complete database, not by a tag, but by its face, just by its facial recognition. Is that light years away? No, sir, that technology is here and it's now. Brian Elliott with 401 Bovine, a facial recognition company for cattle, is with us today. Brian, thanks for being on the program and visiting with us. I was going through all of the vendors that were at the trade show, and I wish that I had time to visit with each and every one of them, of course, and I saw yours, 406 Bovine, facial recognition in cattle. Tell us all about it. 406 Bovine is the newest form of um, electronic identification um, using facial recognition. So, oh boy, you say electronic identification. Brian, we're opening up all kinds of doors right there. Facial recognition, uh, why? Um, it's a permanent ID for an animal. Um, it can integrate with other existing softwares. We're not here saying that we don't need tags. We definitely support tags and use tags in our profile information. We're here saying um, if you don't have a tag, that's no problem. And also, we've created a permanent ID that can't be lost or tampered with. So facial recognition, very similar to a fingerprint. Correct, correct. So if th through our facial recognition, we use strictly the facial features of the animal to identify the animal. So do we do this when they're running through the chute that we have to take some sort of measurement? Can we be X number of feet away? How does that work? Great question. So um, to profile an animal for the first time, we want to bring them through the squeeze chute. And then we're going to, through the app, we're going to take a three-second video. Um, it's all, this is all done on cell phone. So we're going to take a video from eye to eye. So we're going to scan around the head. takes about three seconds. And then we're going to go to the profile information from there. We can attach uh, specific profile information, including animal health notes, uh, breeding notes, um, um, et cetera. So birth date, weights, all that good stuff. And then so that information is then submitted to the cloud. And then when you want to recognize that animal, whether it comes back through the chute or if it's out in the pasture, out in a feedlot pen, uh, we can zoom in, take one image of the head and successfully identify that animal from up 50 feet away. If I'm understanding right, towards uh, data management to try to make it quicker, faster, have access to your notes to find out what you treated that particular steer with seven days ago. Yeah, absolutely. There's a there's a lot of good benefits from individual identification. And the more the margins are, um, you know, decreased, the more we're forced to individually manage animals. And so take a feedlot situation, for instance, we've got to know the ownership of those calves when they come in. We need to know the home pen. Um, if they um, are sick, we need to know what day they were treated, what they were treated with, what they were treated for, what hospital pen they went to, and what eventually home pen they need to come back to is one example. So is that where you're finding the most practical application is in a feeding scenario? We've uh, we've been approached by you know all sectors of the industry, and we see big um, dairy uh, opportunities as well. And so from cow calf to stalker to feedlots um, and and dairy, we see big benefits in all areas. So say for example, if we're in the seed stock business and we're selling 150 Brangus bulls coming coming this spring or something like that, that is an identification. That's a marker, kind of like we said, how a fingerprint that goes with that animal for the rest of their life. So traceability to a degree. Yeah, that's right. And so, it, so, so we'll take program cattle, for instance, I'm talking going through a sale barn. So if we've got an um, NHTC program, we can, we can create a permanent ID. So if those cattle lose that important EID tag, uh, we can have a backup verification um, identification for those animals in case those tags are lost. So then who manages the database? Who has access to that? Just me as a producer that I have access to that? Or does your company oversee it as quote unquote third party verification per se as an example? Through our app, um, all of your data stays within your login. So it goes to our cloud, it is stored there, and you are the only one that has access to that information. So then do you transfer that to somebody else upon the next ownership? So currently we're not doing that. Um, there's a lot of opportunities to grow and expand. We have just launched here in um, November. And so our app, we keep the, we, we don't change ownership within our app. It's just strictly cattle management. 
um, but we are progressing. Um, I'd mention our our primary go-to-market strategy is to integrate this technology with existing cattle management platforms. And so from there, we just, facial recognition has such an outreach. There are so many different applications that we can't provide for all of them. So we see a lot of other really good technologies out in the industry today that could utilize facial recognition and provide that specific value to their target customers. Is it becoming a little bit more accepted, maybe, is the word I'm looking for, facial recognition? We've had a, we've had a lot of really good feedback, you know. Um, there's, there's, I was curious if there's maybe some pushback on that on the other side, too. There's, there's a little skepticism whether it works or not. There's a um, little skepticism. There's a need for it. But um, as we're at the NCBA here and we're getting a lot of traffic coming through our booth, uh, we're just taking a minute or two and showing these guys just a video of just how simple it is. I think there's a perception out there that um, facial recognition some mythical thing that's going to be shared here and there and um, all your information is going to be gone and that's exactly what we do not do we want to hold all your data as as um, you know private as possible and we use a, a lot of resources to make sure your data is most secure and safe so how'd you come up with the name 406 bovine so i originally uh, from montana that's correct i originally started the company up in montana uh, so montana is unique with the uh, area code uh, across one area code across the whole state um, and so we took our 406 roots and our montana roots and put that in with uh, bovine as a species and made a company and so we've uh, expanded from uh, montana we're now based in uh, katy texas so there's a lot of cooperators we're working with down down here and and um a lot of data collection opportunity and customers. So, Wanting more information, where do we go? Uh, 406bovine.com and search 406bovine across any social media platform. We're there. We've got a lot of cool videos, a lot of good information. We're keeping everybody up to date. There's a lot of stuff moving really fast with 406bovine, so I'd love for you guys to um, stay in tune and follow our pages and just keep up to date. Brian Elliott, CEO and founder of 406bovine. I appreciate it. For more information, you can just head to 406bovine.com. We have all of their links available on our website as well, Ranch It Up Show. Com. Check it out and let us know what are your thoughts. We'd love to hear from you. Brian would love to hear from you and your thoughts as well. With more and more technology and data collection and management being used in the meat business, it only makes sense that we have services like 406 Bovine available to us. Thanks again, Brian. Now, we need to take a very quick break here on the Ranch It Up radio show, but do not change that dial. Go nowhere. We have some very important messages and uh, Kirk is on hold. We're going through the numbers and we've got more of the Ranch It Up radio show, including cattle for sale and updates when we come back. The quick, fast, easy, all-in-one location to look at bull sales. Head to ranchchannel.com. Check it out on your phone, ranchchannel.com. All the information on one page at your fingertips, videos, catalogs, everything, ranchchannel.com. At Allied Genetic Resources, it's all about commercial customer success. We see that charge, we understand that charge, and we're going to use all the tools we can to get there. To maximize heterosis, purchase your next herd sire from an Allied Genetic Resources partner. Just head to AlliedGeneticResources.com. Hey, it's Mark Van Zee with LivestockMarket.com. Every week we hear from one of our great partners with updates, info, schedules, reports, and everything in between when it comes to buying and selling livestock and hay online and private treaty. LivestockMarket.com is a centralized online platform of all types of livestock as well as hay and straw. They brought you Tractor House and Auction Time, LivestockMarket.com on Facebook too. Thanks guys. Have a great week. Gelbvie and Balancer. Capitalize on crossbreeding with Gelbvie and Balancer bulls. Raise replacement females with added fertility, increased longevity, and greater productivity. Gelbvie and Balancer females wean more pounds of calf per cow exposed. Gelbvie and Balancer. In the feed yard, Balancer influenced cattle offer increased performance, improved feed efficiency, and have excellent carcass merit. They add the pounds, make the grade, and deliver the value. Gelbvie and Balancer. Make your crossbreeding count with Gelbvie and Balancer genetics. Welcome back to the Ranch It Up radio show. It's that time of the program we check in with Kirk Donsbach, Stonex Financial Incorporated. Kirk, how are you doing, my buddy? I'm doing wonderful, Tigger. How about yourself? Doing excellent, which always uh, makes me smile when it's that time to look at the numbers because I tell you what, if you're in the cow business, you're smiling. 
Yeah, it's been a pretty good couple of weeks, hasn't it, Tigger? You're darn right. You're as darn of Friday, right. as of Friday, February 9th, March feeder futures closed the week at two forty seven oh five. That's up a dollar eighty five on the week. With the CME feeder index at two forty two ninety five, that's up three dollars and seventy eight cents. So even with all the futures market, cash is out actually rallying more. That narrowed the basis to a negative four twenty. April live cattle closed the week at one eighty six fifty two and a half. That's up two sixty on the week. Cash trade is one eighty two in all regions. Uh, normally, I don't mention dress prices, but with all the mud in the north, dress prices are, are where the market's at. And it was 9 to 10 higher, trading 285 to 290. So very good news on the on the dress side. The higher cash trade left the five-area weighted average up dollar eleven at 178.85. And the basis versus February live, a negative $5.77. And normally, we'd be pretty concerned with a negative basis that big in delivery. But this Wednesday, we had 16 loads of fat cattle tendered for delivery, and normally those are retendered. The packer jumped out and demanded delivery of those cattle on the same day. That told the market that where futures were, the packer wanted the cattle. That's a pretty bullish signal. The weekly slaughter was 622,000. That's down 15,000 head versus last week and 6,000 head below the same week prior year. Choice boxes closed up 96 96 cents at 294.04. To wrap this all up, March corn continues its weakness, closing the week at 430 and a half. That's down 12 and a quarter on the week. The charts did have a reversal from January 30th, which was given a little bullishness to the chart, but that was taken out, closing the week at new lows. So not very much good news in the corn market, I guess, unless you're feeding cattle, and then it is good news. Hey, all Mark Van Zee with LivestockMarket.com. Coming up this Wednesday, February 21st, we have an all-class cattle online auction. Bidding opens at just $100 a head, no reserves. All lots will sell. Featured lots include 40 Angus cows. Selling on two 20-head lots, they weigh 13, 50, three to six years old with a couple of seven and eight-year-olds. They're bred to a black Angus bull to calf February through May. Wormed and on pasture with high mineral, they only eat enough grain to keep them gentle. We'll preg check them at the buyer's request from Martin Livestock in Mays Lick, Kentucky. 40 Angus cows selling on two 20-head lots, three to six years old. These are fall calvers, light bred, vet checked and confirmed from Martin Livestock in Mays Lick, Kentucky. Six full blood longhorns. They're each selling on individual lots, bred heifers, cows, and bulls. Beautiful highs and horns. See detailed photos and more online from Banos Ranch in Mayerda, California. Bidding is currently live, but all lots will sell the morning of Wednesday, February 21st at 10 a.m. Central Time. Got cattle to sell? Regular online cattle auctions first and third Wednesday of every month with hay sales every Wednesday on LivestockMarket.com and AuctionTime.com. Ever feel like you're working all day for little to no pay? Let's break the cycle in ranching. It's Shay here, and on my latest episode of Casual Cattle Conversations, Elaine Frace and Lindsay Seafoot shared the importance of compensation on family farms and different methods of compensating family members and employees. Yeah, I think this question of compensation being so critical, I I mean, Elaine made all the exceptionally good points there. Um, The only thing I think that I would maybe add from the HR perspective is that compensation, whether it's on a family farm or in a huge corporation, compensation should be treated in a fair and structured way that pays people for what they're worth and what they are contributing. Um, And I think a lot of times in the family farm, we kind of ignore these structures. and, um, And then I think the lack of structure causes areas of vulnerability and question and then potentially causes disagreements. So at the core, I think um, it should be treated with the same sort of way we would approach at salaries in any other situation, and that will avoid a big ripple effect of p- possible issues in the future. One other thing that Lindsay said that, that's really important, based on skill, that compensation should also be merit-based, not just because you're the oldest son or the oldest daughter or because you have a brother. And I have situations in my farm family coaching practice where I have two brothers, one who's a manager and doing all the decision-making and all the heavy lifting in terms of planning and management. The other one is really a farm laborer. And I think Lindsay can tell you those are two different skill sets and two different compensation models. But in this case, there's a lot of conflict because they're both paying, being paid exactly the same. Get the full details by listening to Casual Cattle Conversations wherever you find your favorite podcasts. Happy ranching, folks. I tip my hat to you from one legend 
to another. I know I've been kind of quiet during this show, but... There's a first for everything. Just before kidding. we go, I do want to give a big old tip of the hat, and that is to all of you that have been in the back, slaving in the kitchen, and cooking up the excellent grub that's been served at all of these bowl and production sales. Oh, good one. And I know chili is normally like the uh, the food of choice, You know, but the- it's always fantastic. I got to say, between the chili we've had, the roast beef we've had, even some of you have even grilled steaks the night before. Prime all I rib, can we've say, had, we've had it all. You're doing an excellent job. Keep it up. And now that's going to wrap it up for today. A big thanks to all of our guests, and we've got a slew of them. Justin Tupper with St. Ange Livestock for the update. Austin Henderson with Stockman's Livestock for the update as well. Mark Vanzi with LivestockMarket.com and EquineMarket and AuctionTime.com. Kirk Donsbach with Stonex Financial Incorporated. Brian Elliott with 406 Bovine. Appreciate the time. Shea Keister Warner with Casual Cattle Conversations. And to you, the boss lady, Rebecca Warner, a.k.a. Beck. A big thank you to our partners, RanchChannel.com, Stockman's Livestock Exchange, the American Galve Association, Imogene Ingredients, Pharmatan, Westway Feed Products, Medora Boot and Western Wear, Allied Genetic Resources, Allied Feeding Partners, LivestockMarket.com, EquineMarket.com, AuctionTime.com, RFD-TV, Wrangler, and this fine radio station. And crew, so glad y'all came with us one more time as we ranch it up. Be sure to follow along and like us on Facebook at Ranch It Up Show. Our email is ranchitupshow at gmail.com. You can call and you can text 24 7 at 707 726 2420. That's 707 Ranch 20. Spread the good word and join us again next week where it's always Tigger and Beck approved. Stay ranchy and ranch it up. <laughs>